So for our first example, let's consider a mass hanging on a spring. Okay. So let's start off and we hang uh, uh, 125 grams on a spring. And that's going to be some distance down from the, the ceiling. And then I add mass to the spring. And so let's say I now put 160 grams on the So in other words, it adds more mass to it and it stretches down further. So this is going to be some length here, L, and this is going to be some longer length, L2. And so let's say that L2 minus L1 is going to be 4.5 centimeters. So it stretched an extra 4.5 centimeters. And so I want to find what is K. Well, I know that free body diagram, if I got Mg pulling down, I got Kx pulling in the other direction. So that means if I call this M1 and M2, then M1G is going to be Kx1. M2G equals Kx2. Now the problem is we don't know K, but we also don't know what the X, Xs are. Uh, we don't know the Xs because uh, we don't know what the unstretched length of the string was. So you look at this and say, oh, gosh, we are in deep trouble. Well... Why don't we subtract the two? So M2G minus M1G, that's going to be KX2 minus KX1. So M2 minus M1 times G equals KX2 minus X1. Well, that's going to be the delta M times G equals K delta X. Well, we know delta X. We don't know what x2 is, we don't know what x1 is, but we do know that delta x is 4.5 centimeters. We know that, that it went an extra 4.5 centimeters. Well, what's delta m? Delta m would be the 160 grams minus 125 grams, so that's going to be 35 grams. So that means we know delta m. So that means that we can solve for k. So k is going to be equal to the delta M times G divided by delta X. And so that would be the 0 0.035 kilograms times 9.81 meter per second squared divided by 0 0.045 meters. And so K is going to be 7.63 newtons per meter. Okay, so now we got it. So we, even though we didn't know all the terms, we knew the differences between the terms, and that got us what we needed to know. Okay, so we've got this hundred and sixty grams hanging on the end of the spring, and then what is going to happen is that. 20 grams falls off. So we have 140 grams left. And this distance right here is how far down it stretched for 160 grams. So that means that the Kx pulling up is going to be bigger than the Mg. And so this is going to accelerate upwards. It's going to accelerate upwards to its the right distance, and then it's going to overshoot that distance and go up here and go back and forth oscillating. And so what I want to know is what's the amplitude of that oscillation, what's the period of the oscillation, and uh, sometimes rather than just doing period, we talk about how many oscillations per second it is, and that is the frequency. So I want to know what's the frequency of the oscillation. And so we have three terms here I'm trying to find. And so first of all, let's tackle the amplitude. The amplitude, okay, as this thing oscillates, remember, it's going to be too far down. It wants to be here. So I want to find what's that delta x, and that would be, that would be the center point. It's going to be the delta x below, then go to the delta x above, then below, then above, then below. So how do I figure that out? Well, delta m times g equals k delta x. We derived that before, 
So we just use the same thing we had before, delta mg over k. So the delta x is going to be my amplitude in this case. And delta m is 20 grams, so it's 0 0.02 kilograms times 9.81 meter per second squared. And then what you do is you divide by 7.63 newtons per meter. So the amplitude comes out to be equal to uh, 2.57 centimeters. So that's how far up and down it goes. So the next question is, what's the period? Well, the period we know for a simple harmonic oscillator is square root 2m over k. So the bigger the mass, the bigger the period. The stiffer the spring, then the shorter the period. Uh, a stiffer spring would be a bigger k. So a, a less stiff spring would have a longer period. Okay. Uh, uh, so in this case, this is 2 pi square root. Now, what is m? m is how much is oscillating. So that's of 140 grams. That's so 0.14 kilograms. Uh, it's not how much fell off. It's how much is still oscillating. Okay, divided by 7.63 newtons per meter. So the period comes out to be 0.851 seconds. Okay. But I also wanted to know what is the frequency. That's how many oscillations per second. Well, that's defined to be 1 over the period. So that would be 1 divided by 0.851 seconds. And so that's going to be 1.17 oscillations per second, or inverse seconds. Well, the oscillations per second or cycles per second is hard to say. And so we define a unit called a hertz. And that is oscillation per second. And so F would be 1.17 hertz. So that means it oscillates 1.17 times every second.